Hey, how's it going everyone? Sitting low, just hanging out in the garage late night, coming at you guys with another video. In tonight's video, what I'm working on is this harness that we're using for our 5.3 LS swap. Now, I don't know if I'd mentioned this in a previous video or not, but when the people that were pulling the engine and trans out of the truck that it came from were pulling it, they just went ahead and snipped a big leg of that harness off, which I didn't notice until I had gotten home. But anyhow, the other day when I was at the junkyard, I was able to retrieve that missing leg of the harness. So what I'm going to be doing tonight is I'm going to be going through tracing all these wires, figuring out what's what, where it comes from and where it needs to go to, and labeling everything accordingly. That way when it comes time to rehooking everything up, I won't have to worry about getting anything mixed up and everything will work and function the way it was supposed to. So I figured I would include you guys in that. Um, some of the tools I'll be using for this is my multimeter. If you do anything electrical related, a multimeter is definitely a great tool to have in your arsenal. A uh, good set of wire strippers, small flathead screwdriver or pick tool because we're going to be picking the ends of uh, electrical connectors open and stuff, and a sharpie and a rolling masking tape for labeling all the wires, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all we're going to need. But before we even get started doing any of this, we're going to go inside and we're going to wash our hands really good because anytime you work with anything like this, you want to make sure your hands are extra clean because any kind of residual grease or oils from food you may have ate or whatever... If it rubs onto the wires anywhere, you know, that just invites critters to come and nibbling on your wires and that can create all sorts of headache for you. So it's always a good idea to wash your hands really good before you start messing with this type of stuff. So as you can see here, we got about, I don't know, 15, 20 wires to deal with. And as you can see, a lot of them are the same color and then some of them are individually colored, which... You know, it's a safe bet. You can, you know, once you got one of a kind colored wires, you get to, you can pretty much assume that the light green wire goes to the light green wire over there. Same with the dark uh, green and same with this brown wire. But when you get into a situation where you start getting multiple pink wires, we got three pink wires, uh, three tan wires, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like, looks like seven or eight black wires. You can't just automatically assume that they all just go, you can just connect them all willy-nilly and everything's going to work. No, each one of them has a designation. So in order to hook these wires back up exactly where they are supposed to go, what I'm doing is I'm using my multimeter here. I currently got it set on the continuity setting. And when you have it set on the continuity setting, whenever you, you know, touch the uh, leads together and have a continuous circuit, it makes the beeper and the multimeter beep. So as you can see here, I've already pretty much traced down two of the wires. I got the C4 and the E8, and these two wires here go to the C2 connector here. Now what I mean by the C4 and the E8 designation, if you look on the back of this plug here, this camera is probably not going to pick it up, but each one of these rows and each one of these slots is, is designated by a, a number and a letter. You know, for example, you know, uh, C4 would be A, B, C, and then fourth pin over, you know what I mean? So that's pretty much how, how that goes. So in order, let's say we're trying to figure out where this pink wire goes here. You, you wrap your wire around, you wrap the wire around the lead just so it holds it. Then you more or less just take your other lead here and just start jumping around and probing. And once you hear, once you hear the meter, uh, meter start beeping, it's a safe bet that you found the wire, but I also like to continue jumping around just to make sure they're not also uh, going to another pin somewhere else, just to make sure. But it's hard doing this with one hand holding a camera, but I think you guys are getting what I'm getting at. But anyway, so only this one lights it up. So let's go ahead and figure out what this one goes to. This would be the, the one, two, third one over from the back so that would be that would be actually from the top down that would be row eight and then you got a b c and d so that would be d eight and then you can also check it from the back side to confirm and yep that's looking like d eight so this wire here goes to D8 on the C2 connector. So I'm going to go ahead and take some masking tape. I'm going to write D8 on it, wrap it around this wire. And then once I'm armed with that information, I'll be able to cross-reference some schematics and be able to terminate the wires accordingly. 
So um, it's not hard to do, it's just time consuming and tedious. And not all of the wires just go to this plug here. You've got this plug here, you've got all of these other plugs here to go through, and then including these two plugs here, which got about, I don't know, 60 pin assignments each in them. So like I said, if you have a harness that is like totally butchered up, it is not even worth your time to try to even start to go through it. Your best bet is to just either order one or just try to find one that hasn't been all hacked and butchered up. Me, I've been dealing with like car stereos and wiring and stuff like that for a long time, so I'm no stranger to this type of stuff. But, you know, if, if you're intimidated by wiring in the least bit, you know, somebody would be ripping their hair out trying to figure this stuff out. But, like I said, that's pretty much where I'm at. So, going through here, figuring out where what's what so I can reconnect this to that and have a complete harness again. So, I wish I would have noticed that earlier. I probably would have try to knock the price down on the engine and trans a little bit more but it is what it is so anyway just figured i would show that show you guys what i was up to now so i'm gonna go ahead and keep probing away and getting these wires all figured out so i'll be back All right, so I got this end of the harness figure out, and like I said, it's not hard to do. It's just tedious and time consuming. As you can see, some of these wires go to the blue connector, some of them go to the red connector, some of them go to this uh, C2 block. But anyway, now that I know where all these wires are coming from, it'll be a lot easier for me to determine where they actually go, if you get what I'm saying. So now that I have these uh, pin assignments for the computer pinouts and whatnot, I can do some uh, referencing on schematics online and whatever and see where these wires are designated to. Like, let's just say, for example, that this C4 wire is for the, you know, driver side or passenger side front oxygen sensor. I'll be able to hook it to the plug that goes to the driver side front oxygen sensor and I'll have everything working the way it was supposed to. So, anyways, probably boring to watch, but it's something that has to be done. All right, so when you come to a group of wires that's all the same color and you want to find out if they're all common and sharing the same voltage, just like testing any other wire, you just go ahead and wrap one of the wires around your lead here to hold it. And then take your other lead, just start individually testing each wire. And as you can hear, we're getting continuity through all five of these wires here. And being that they're all black wires, which is conducive to ground and most automotive uh, wiring applications that pretty much tells me that all of these wires are probably spliced internally throughout this harness which means that when it comes time to terminating them over to this end of the harness we don't have to worry too much about getting the black wires too mixed up so I figured I would point that out anyways you guys I got this uh, leg of the harness all pretty much figured out now I just got to do the same thing over here and uh, get these all labeled up and uh, we'll go from there All right, so I got this leg of the harness all figured out and using my multimeter, I was able to trace down and get everything labeled according to what wire goes to what and does what, all with the exception of one wire in particular. As you can see, I got it labeled here with a question mark because I really have no idea where it goes to. But um, as you can see, it starts out here. It's just a brown wire. And when you trace it down into the harness here, it ends up coming out right here, which I thought when I was at the junkyard grabbing this leg of the plug that this was also a, you know an untouched harness, but even this harness was butchered into that I didn't even see, so apparently I need to get my eyes checked, but just a brown wire coming out of here, and I have no idea where it goes to from here. Um, when I trace it from this section of the harness back throughout the harness, where it ends up coming to is the C100 plug, about five pins over there. I also got it labeled 
but yeah, I just need to jump around on the internet and figure out which, uh, you know, what function that wire controls, if it's needed, if it's something that goes, if it's something that stays. So in the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it be. But yeah, we've got both of our harnesses pretty much, well, both halves of our harness figured out. And yeah, it only took about two hours of sitting around and testing wires and a multimeter. So another reason, boys and girls, why when you're LS, when you're LS swap shopping to get a complete harness, because, you know, if I didn't have years worth of electrical experience in this multimeter here, average Joe Blow consumer would be paying hell right now trying to figure out where all these wires go to and where they came from. But luckily I have, like I said, I got experience with this stuff, so it wasn't too bad. It was just tedious and time consuming more or less. So glad that part is over. Now we can go ahead and pretty much just reconnect all these wires according, but I think I'm gonna hold off onto that part, hold off on that part until I'm actually stripping down the entire harness and simplifying it for the swap. Because like I said, some of these wires are gonna be going, some of these wires are gonna be staying, and until then, there's really no sense in reconnecting and soldering everything and making it look pretty when you're just going to end up tearing into it again in a week from now. So we're just going to go ahead and leave it there. So yeah, until then, you guys stick around and I'll catch you in the next one.